Hi, my name's Michelle. I'm from Layers of Learning. I'm going to talk today about science. Kids should be taught in science for two basic reasons. One is to just be scientifically literate, to understand, uh, you know, the, the basic principles and, and uh, underlying laws that govern our physical world. You need to know this to know, to have good decision making, to um, make political decisions. You need to know it for common sense, everyday life. Like, if you understand physics, you won't have to wonder whether or not you should be wearing a seatbelt. That's that's just one example. There are you know thousands of things that we come across in our daily life that you probably take for granted, but that are you know about because you had at least some of a science education. And so that's the first reason. The second reason kids should be taught science is because some of them may become scientists. So they need to learn how science is done and they need to be exposed to it so that they know whether or not this is an area that they will enjoy. Science is extremely broad. It goes from everywhere from super mathematical physics and astrophysics um, down to the very basic kind of um, you know field biology where you're counting populations. So it, it can it's a huge huge variety of of interest, it's not just um, for the super smart kids. Well, let's put it that way. Science is for everybody. So, and science education should teach, first of all, the scientific method. And it shouldn't just teach the scientific method in one unit about the scientific method. It should have the scientific method embedded clear through the curriculum. And the core of the scientific method is asking questions. So clear through layers of learning, for example, we have kids write down their hypothesis before they do the experiment, or we have them do original research where they are actually designing the experiment and coming up with their own questions and their own way of arriving at those questions. That's the scientific method. Most science curriculum has just recipes. Kids follow a recipe and they get the desired outcome, and they by that they learn the scientific principle that is intending to be taught. Those are important. Layers of learning includes a lot of that too. But it's also important to have research where kids are actually the ones who have to, have to ask the questions. We also include the scientific method in a lot of sidebars. We call them deep thoughts. Basically, it's spots where we ask a question like, is this really true? Or what do you think about this? Or these are the two sides. Which one do you think is the more reasonable? That's science. It's asking questions. It's not uh, coming to a consensus. Although a lot of times we do come to a consensus. Let's, let's give an example. Everyone knows about the law of gravity. You experience it every day. What goes up must come down. Bodies are attracted to each other. Except because a scientist questioned that, we now know that it's not universally true. It does not hold on the minuscule proportions of the inside of an atom, for example. It was Einstein who questioned the settled science of Isaac Newton to come up with a greater understanding. So it's important that we teach kids that you're supposed to be questioning this stuff, that you're supposed to be saying, wait, but is that really true? And is that always true? And is it true if I do this to the system? So so it's important that that's built into any curriculum. And I don't think it is very often. I think most of the time schools actually teach the exact opposite, where they're teaching, this is the answer, you are to memorize it, and you will regurgitate it on the test. And if you get it wrong, then you have questioned the authorities and you will get a bad grade. And that's that's kind of the opposite of how science is done. Or at least it should be in the real world because again, the premise of the scientific method is asking a question and then coming up with a way to test the answer to arrive at what we hope is the truth. But with science, we never know it's the truth. We just think we're pretty darn close a lot of the time. Again and again, science has shown that what we thought was the truth has been overturned. And we point that out in layers of learning as well. The second thing is that the recipes where kids are going through the steps and doing uh, an experiment is um, important too because doing the hands-on activities teaches kids how to actually do the scientific skills. For example, this section is really controversial because some people think that it's wrong to ever harm an animal. Um, but 
We include dissections in layers of learning. Again, layers of learning is pick and choose. So if you don't want to do the dissections, you don't have to. But we include them because that skill, being able to <coughs> being able to take apart, to dissect an animal and see its actual internal structure, knowing how to do that is really important. It's really important to be able to compare the anatomy of a starfish to a human. Starfish have a... Uh, a circulatory system that is based on water. They use the seawater to circulate nutrients and it through their bodies and to get rid of waste. Humans use blood. Being able to see that contrast is important in comparative anatomy. It's important to understand us. It's important to understand the, the marvelous, amazing variety of the natural world. I personally think that dissections increase reverence for nature, especially if you pair it with... Um, with learning about the animal. So if you read a bunch of books about starfish and you do a dissection of starfish and you find out how amazing and miraculous and just just widely, this wide variety in our lives in, in the world that we live in, I think that increases awe and it increases reverence and, and uh, love for the animals that we're studying. The next thing is that a good science education should include lots of reading and it shouldn't be textbook reading because the textbooks have one point of view. I like to have my kids read a lot of different books, and especially in areas where there's controversy in science, I like them to read more than one point of view on, on the science in question. For example, global warming is a really big controversy right now, and it's, it's definitely become extremely political. And Politics has the power to affect our daily lives because it's the power of government. They can make us do things or not do things. And so understanding that debate is important. And you really need to understand both sides. You need to be able to read both sides, have a wide and broad understanding of the whole issue before you can be smart enough to come to the right conclusion, or at least what you hope is the right conclusion. So I like to have outside reading. In layers of learning, we include library lists and books in sidebars so that kids have an opportunity or we're, we're helping parents direct their kids to various books about scientific topics. It's really good to read things that are written by authors who really care about the topic and not just a textbook that has summarized the basic information. Um, finally, uh, scientists use a tool. All scientists have a notebook. And the notebook is actually an official document. It can be used in a court of law uh, to prove, say, uh, a copyright case or a, a trademark, or not not trademark, like uh, the rights to scientific research or things like that. So it's basically just like a any spiral bound or, or bound notebook that the scientist keeps his or her notes in and they date it, they put a title at the top of the page, they'll draw diagrams labeled, notes, da um, tables of data, graphs, whatever is, is in the scientist research. And that happens in chemistry labs. It happens out in the field with biologists. It happens in, in physics. There will be notes, uh, pages full of mathematical calculations for an astrophysicist, for example, but all scientists keep a notebook. So I personally think that's a wonderful tool to teach kids how to keep a science notebook and layers of learning integrates that into the curriculum. And we have kids take notes on information that is being presented to them, as well as information uh, that they are doing original research on in their notebooks. And this is for, for everybody. This is for, you know, little kids are drawing pictures with their parents' help, writing some notes. High schoolers are doing their original research and taking detailed notes of their, um, their results and their procedures and so on. So that is, those are the basic, um, tools that Layers of Learning uses to build scientific literacy and to build scientists. We hope that some of your kids will become scientists in the future and help the world be a little bit better place, help us to understand it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Layers of Learning is a homeschool curriculum company. We create hands-on and literature-based lessons in history, geography, science, arts, and language arts. Check us out at layersoflearning.com and on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Have fun learning!